Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl go back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. Uh, you can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy our weekly content. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Fanny and Jesse, and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we've got a Patreon account. You guys can feel free to become members, and we'll appreciate a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel. A big shout out to the people that keep on liking, commenting, sharing. You guys are just the best and thank you very much. I hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're going to be reacting to the importance of the Sunnah in Islam by Dr. Zaki Naik. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dr. Zaki, what is the importance and the authority of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? As far as the Sunnah is concerned, it is the second unavoidable source of Islam. If you have to understand Islam, number one source is the Quran and the second is the Sunnah of the Prophet. To understand the full Islam, you cannot understand without these two sources. Both are important, the Quran as well as authentic Hadith, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet. And as far as the importance of Sunnah is concerned, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 59, Atullah wa Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And those charged with authority among you. But if you differ among yourselves, refer it back to Allah and His Rasul if you believe in Allah and the last day. This is the best and the most suitable for the final determination. Here the word used in the Quran is Atiyu, which means to obey. And it used for Atullah. Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. So the obey word is used for Allah and the messenger, but it's not used for those charged with authority among you. That means the undisputed obeying is only for Allah and his Rasul. And further goes on and saying that if those among you, those charged with authority, if you differ among yourselves, refer it back to Allah and his Rasul. So Allah and his Rasul are the final authority. It doesn't say refer it back to those charged with authority. Because we know that many a time, the scholars, they differ among themselves. So if they differ, if any scholar differs, you go back to Allah and the Rasul. And the scholar who is in line with Allah and the Rasul, you have to follow him. So this is the importance of the Sunnah. And further, there are two separate things. It says, Atiullah wa Atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So obey Allah means follow the Quran. And obey the Messenger means follow the Sunnah of the Messenger. That is authentic hadith. Furthermore, it says that both these two sources are different. Quran is different and the sunnah, authentic hadith are different. And further if we analyze, the word wa is used between them, indicating that we have to follow both. It doesn't say summa, atullah, summa atu rasul, that then you follow the rasul. You have to follow both of them simultaneously then only will you understand Islam in the right perspective. And here the word that is used here, that it is obey Allah and the Messenger, both are equally important. When it says refer back to Allah and the Rasul, that means I have referred back to Allah and the Rasul, not only to Allah or not only to the Rasul, both are important for you to understand the true Sharia. And the last point to be noted is that the starting of the Quranic verse says, Ya ayyuhu lazina amanu, O you who believe, Atullah, what's your Rasul? That means obeying Allah and obeying the Messenger is for all the believers. It's not only for the companions or for some of the believers, it's for all the believers. Further, it's mentioned in Surah Jinn, chapter number 72, verse number 23. It says that if you disobey Allah and His Rasul, then your place will be in the hellfire to dwell therein forever. That means if you disobey Allah and His Messenger, your place will be in the hellfire. You will not enter paradise. Further, it's mentioned that 
if you don't obey Allah and the messenger, your deed will be in vain. Allah says in Surah Muhammad, chapter number 47, verse number 33, Obey Allah and obey the messenger and let not your deeds go in vain. Further, as far as the authority of the sunnah is concerned and the importance is concerned, obeying the messenger is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 80, that if you obey the messenger, you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you turn away, we have not sent the messenger to look after your affairs, especially your evil deeds. And further it's mentioned in the hadith of Sai Muslim, volume number 3, hadith number 4518, the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that if you obey me, you obey Allah. If you disobey me, you disobey Allah. So obeying the messenger is same as obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And furthermore, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Najm, chapter number 53, verse number 3 and 4, that the messenger does not speak out of himself. It is nothing more than an inspiration sent down to him. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 7280, the beloved Prophet said that there are among the believers who will enter paradise and some will refuse to enter paradise. So the Sahaba asked, who would refuse to enter paradise? So the Prophet said, those who obey me, they enter the paradise. Those who disobey me, they refuse to enter it. And finally, the Quran says that if you obey the messenger, Allah will love you. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 31, Allah says to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, tell them, if you love Allah, follow me, that is follow the messenger. And Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins. So, following the messenger is loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, this is the importance of the Sunnah in Islam. Very interesting video. I feel like everything was quite straightforward. But then I have questions as usual. I'm confused. Can someone just clarify to me, is it just me or I feel like Dr. Zaki Naik is equating um, Muhammad to God? Because he said, if you, for example, if you follow Muhammad, then you follow uh, God. If you, because I'm just, because I'm just, confused by this comparison so does it mean if you don't think muhammad's ways of life and teachings are not okay but you know god exists does that make you not a follower of god i'm honestly just wondering why there's this equation of muhammad equals god how can you say you won't enter heaven if you don't follow muhammad's teachings because to me it sounds like what Christians do. It's like saying the way to God is through um, Jesus. So what's the difference now when he says if you don't, if you don't maybe believe in Muhammad, you won't see heaven. It's like saying if you don't believe in Jesus, then you won't enter heaven. Can someone just make me understand what this comparison was all about? Because I don't know how I feel about what was just said otherwise let's feel free to start a conversation in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to respond make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video